Assassin's Creed Valhalla hit stores this week, and for fans of the new direction laid down by Origins and Odyssey, Valhalla continues that trend towards being a full-fledged RPG. In fact, to call it anything else these days is probably a bit misleading. Nevertheless, Assassin's Creed is a better game for it, and like we did with Odyssey, we thought we'd prepare some top tips to make you a pro at Valhalla, and if like us you decide to crank up the difficulty, then these should steer you in the right direction. Ladies and gents, here are 7 tips to make you a pro in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. While playing on the harder difficulties, it won't take you long to realise that you're in for more of a tricky time than you may have first thought. In fact, health and stamina management play such a key role here, as does your pouch. Before we move on to the crux of this point, a quick note about stamina. In Valhalla, you'll often find yourself running out of stamina more often, leaving you unable to block or dodge, and leaving you open to attack. While in the more traditional Assassin's Creed games you can get away with button mashing, here you can't. You should approach the combat like you would a Dark Souls game. It's obviously not as unforgiving or as hard, so that means dip in for a few hits, jump out, let your stamina regenerate, and repeat. Don't mash the dodge button either. Anyway, back to the main point, upgrade the health pouch as soon as possible, even if it takes you a little bit of grinding. The first levels can be ground out with leather from animals and iron ore from metal deposits, so while you're traversing Norway, get farming resources straight away. Later on it gets a little more tricky and you'll need more high tier materials. That said, you can upgrade the pouch twice via that method, and that should suffice until you get to England. Oh, and make sure it's full up too before descending on a camp, so get plant picking or stealing other people's food whenever you can. As a quick lead up into one of the next categories as well, you should head to the bottom right portion of the skill tree and unlock the grit ability, as that will allow you to regain some health in a battle, which can be a lifesaver, quite literally. There are many combat strategies in Assassin's Creed Valhalla that are perfectly acceptable, and many builds as well. Whether you're going for a two-handed axe and creating a strength build to brute force your way through camps, great, I would suggest a more stealthy approach with a light sword and aim for stealth, but that's me. And if you do that, you'll likely breeze through camps, even if you have the stealth difficulty set to master. Even if you do opt for a stealth build, it's impossible to avoid direct toe-to-toe -to -toe combat. Thanks to the nature of the game, you're a freaking viking after all and you can't exactly stealth your way through a raid, it's just not possible. Ok, it might be possible, but we didn't try it. Why would you? When you do assault monasteries across England, mastering the parry is a good way to stay on top, whether you have a shield or not. Honestly, we advise the one-handed weapon and shield combo, we found it to be the most potent. Regardless, if you do go in without a shield, either dual wielding or with a two-handed weapon, parrying is still possible and just as good a strategy. Best strategy by far though, not just for grunts but for more elite characters as well, is the combo move of finding a weak spot and then hitting that weak spot wherever it may be. Then you can follow it with a stun attack by pressing in the right stick. This is a devastating attack that can assist you in most encounters in the game, whether you're facing off against a load of grunts at once, or a trio of elites or some tricky zealots. Do not underestimate how good this combo is. I don't know about any of you, but usually when we get down and dirty with an RPG boasting its own skill tree, the first thing we look at is the last ability in that skill tree, then we can start working our way towards that. You can't do that in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, because for some reason Ubisoft Montreal has fogged out the entire tree until you unlock a node adjacent to it. Is this to offer some element of surprise? Who knows, but we all know a lot of people are heading straight for Google when the game drops, so as they don't waste any points or time. Well first things first, you can respec for free at any time, and also when you do, anything unfogged remains unfogged for the time being, so you can get the lay of the land. But to save you some time and effort, here are a list of some of the best abilities you should be working towards as soon as possible. Chain Assassination. Straight out the gate, the best ability in the game is in the bottom left of the skill tree, allowing those with a stealth build to maximise their effectiveness, especially if there are two guards super close to one another. Stomp is another handy ability in fact, it's the first ability node to the north of where you start, so A, it makes it super accessible, and B, it's fantastic in the middle of a battle if you knock someone down on the ground, allowing you to deal a significant amount of damage with a big boot to the face. Brush with Death, which is left from the start, northwest of Backstab, is another early ability that can be priceless, especially if you opt for an evasive build over a blocking or parry build. It allows you to dodge an attack at the last second and slow down time a bit. Super valuable! 
And finally, one just to make traversal a bit more enjoyable, brake fall, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It breaks your fall, or at least limits the amount of damage taken when you do take a big fall. It's also worth bearing in mind that there are four adrenaline upgrades which are invaluable too. The nearest one is a few nodes left into the strength path, the red one, which is north. The other three are bottom center, bottom left near chain assassination and top right, just north of parry damage. This is kind of close too. If you played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you might be expecting an overabundance of armour and weapons in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Well, you'd be wrong. Valhalla is rather tight with the armour and weapons, so much so that instead of saving resources for later on in the game to use on better weapons and armour, you might as well get upgrading them straight away. There's a good chance that the weapons and equipment you get in Valhalla you'll be using for a good 5-10 to 10 hours at least. In order to upgrade them, you're going to take leather and iron ore during the early game. Gained by killing animals and smashing ore deposits, shown in your vicinity using your raven. But they also require ingots. Early on, these will be carbon ingots which are found in raid chests or in valuable stashes. Gold pulses if you use your pulse. Or gold icons when you're flying around with sin in your raven. The same applies to nickel and tungsten ingots, but they're found exclusively within the higher leveled areas later on in the game. Also, once you've upgraded them, whack in a rune. Runes can be taken out and moved around from piece of armour, weapon to whatever, so don't think twice about using them. On the topic of different armours and weapons though, like those in sets or those of a much better quality, they do exist and are now found in special places in the world. As indicated by the gold armour symbol on your hood or map, the little assassin looking fella. There's no saying that these will be better than what you have though, and if they are, there will only be a slight upgrade in the early game. Find a set and you get set bonuses too, so they're often worth hunting down. Especially, for instance, the Hidden Ones set, which is scattered around in former Assassin's Bureaus in the major cities around England. It should also be noted that it seems like sets are confined to areas. So for example, all of the Huntsman set pieces can be found in Leicestershire. So if you're missing a piece, at least you know which county it's in. And obviously, before we move on, when it comes to much later in the game, obviously the stuff you find will no doubt be better, but by then you'll have resources coming out the wazoo. Money is almost pointless in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There are no fancy weapons to buy, no fancy armours, nothing, so don't be shy about spending that silver on resources or materials that you really need. The only thing aside from resources and materials to spend it on is the base weapons that you can level up. Say you don't like daddy's axe and you want something a little bit nippier, you can purchase a dagger from say, the shop in your settlement and then upgrade the shit out of it. We did that fairly early on in Valhalla and that dagger completely changed our playstyle for the better and remained with us for hours and hours. So yeah that's about it really, don't save for a rainy day because even though it's England and it usually rains all the time, it doesn't in Valhalla's England, metaphorically of course. So buy resources to upgrade your pouch, your weapons and maybe a new base weapon, it's your call. But whatever you do, don't bother saving silver for something big that comes along because it doesn't. And it won't. Oh and sell those trinkets too, they're useless otherwise. Oh, oh, and one last thing before we move on, when you see a dotted plus symbol, pick them up. They're opals and can be used to buy fancy items from special markets as indicated by the woven plus symbol on the map. When you hit England and take down those pesky Saxons, you're going to be rewarded with your own settlement, one of Valhalla's new mechanics. Yes, you can build your own town! From the off, before you do anything else, you're going to want to do the two raids in Grant Bridge Skyer after the main story one where you create the blacksmith's tent and absolutely exhaust every single bit of treasure there. That should set you up to kickstart your encampment in the right way. When you're done and you've got all that sweet, sweet loot, head back to camp and start building. Resources are limited early on in the game until you're a high enough level to tackle the surrounding regions, so head to the skies with Sin in the Raven and plot your expansions. While a stable, a shop, a tattoo parlour and a dockyard might seem cool, they really only offer cosmetic upgrades. That's why you should focus on the Hidden Ones Bureau because without it you don't get access to the Leap of Faith, which is still one of the coolest parts of Assassin's Creed as impossible as it may be. Then you want to unlock the fishing tent to get a fishing line and if you have enough left over then you need to get the shop to sell trinkets and buy resources. Perhaps next on the agenda should be the museum to sell the Roman artifacts that you'll undoubtedly come across on your travels, but you'll probably have to wait to build that. So yeah, while looking pretty and up for the task is very important, only do so when you have resources aplenty.
Okay, so Assassin's Creed Valhalla treats the special abilities different to how it did in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In Odyssey, you unlock them with skill points. It was super simple. In Valhalla, it's a little bit more complex than that. Instead, you have to seek them out in the form of books of knowledge dotted around the map, both in Norway and England. If you ever see a book symbol with a Viking rune on it, head there and uncover the truths locked away, as they'll grant you a special ability. While main missions and raids and most major activities will take you in their general vicinity, some of them can be off the beaten path. Here are some of our favourites that you can find fairly early on, and they'll be with you for many, many hours after that. In fact, we're still using them now. Anyway, here they are and where to find them. First of all, to kick things off, don't leave Norway without getting Throwing Axe Fury, found during the story mission where you raid Notfall. And don't miss the Rage of Helheim either, which is found at Kjotva's Fortress. Easy to miss, while also easy to find. Follow the symbols and reap your rewards. First up for proper then, Dive of the Valkyries is great. It allows you to dive bomb enemies to take them out of action for a short while, or knock them off a cliff or platform. This can be found fairly early on in the game at the Isle of Eli Monastery in Grantbidshire. The next one is a little off the beaten path at ruins called Venonis, northwest of your camp in Leicester. It's the harpoon attack and it's super handy for thinning out the crowd by flinging two enemies against one another. The damage it causes two foes is actually quite staggering and you can reel them in if they're trying to run away or they're at a distance. And lastly, Mark of Death is an ability you can find early on in Norway in Arekstead, but if you grab the second book in Meldeburn in central Grantbyshire, it's a hugely unstoppable move when you're assaulting camps, one that can do an incredible amount of damage to a lot of foes all at once. There are a load more dotted around England, more than 20 of them in fact, but it'll be a long time before you leave Grantbyshire and Leicestershire, so seek these out and you'll be golden. The other ones you can mix and match with what suits your playstyle, whether that's Piercing Shot found in the Templebra Fort in Leicestershire, or Russian Bash which is found at Ravensburg in South Grantbridgeshire. Just make sure you stick with those main ones we talked about and you'll be all good. Also, quick side note, do missions for people in your camp as they crop up, because they might give you some good rewards on this front too. Wink wink. <laughs> And there you have it folks, 7 handy tips to make you a pro at Assassin's Creed Valhalla and to dominate England. Thanks very much for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye!